Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineerandtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will discuss compound interest and the use of uniform gradient payment formulas. In this video, we will define the topic of compound interest and the use of uniform gradient payment formulas, walk through the general workflow of solving such problems, and jump into working an example of something we may see on the exam. The topic of compound interest and uniform gradient payment formulas falls under the main category of engineering economics. Equations, symbols, tables, and information on the various topics covered in engineering economics can be referenced on pages 114 through 120 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision. As explained in a previous video, money does not have the same value at different points in time. As explained in a previous video, money does not have the same value at different points in time. For this reason, we need tools, tables, formulas, and various economic factors to reference when it is necessary to compare two complex alternatives. A series of these formulas are known as the uniform gradient payment formulas. These formulas take a uniform gradient series which is a cash flow either increasing or decreasing by a fixed amount over a period of time and converts it into either a uniform annual value or a single equivalent value at some other point in time. Uniform gradient series of transactions are always increasing or decreasing by a fixed amount and are denoted with a G. Recall that we are concerned with the effects of interest when using these formulas and more specifically the compound interest. Compound interest is the interest for a period calculated off the principal and interest from a previous period. All engineering economic analysis is based off compound interest and for that reason special tables with various pre-calculated conversion factors have been developed for our use. So let's talk a little bit about the general workflow. The goal of any uniform gradient series payment problem is to determine what single monetary value or uniform annual value would be equivalent based off specific economic factors. The first step to solving a uniform gradient series payment problem is to determine the various factors of importance. These factors include, number one, the trend and magnitude of the uniform gradient series, number two, the equivalent value to be determined, whether it's a future, present, or annual value. Number three, the interest rate. And number four, the number of periods. Once these variables are defined, we can solve these problems in one of two ways. Either by using the gradient formulas found in the table on page 114 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision, or by using the functional notation version of these equations and referencing the compound interest tables starting on page 116 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook. So let's run through an example. A company purchases a machine that is projected to have a maintenance cost of $250 after the first year and is expected to increase $250 every year thereafter for the 15 year expected lifespan. Assuming a 10% interest, how much money should the company put aside now to maintain this machine for the duration of the lifespan? So let's run through the solution. The goal is to determine how much money the company should put aside today or now to cover the 15 years of increasing maintenance costs for this piece of equipment. This can be determined in one of two ways either by using the uniform series compound amount formula found in the table on page 114 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, or by using the functional notation version of this equation and referencing the compound interest tables. In this video, we will solve using the uniform gradient series formula written in functional notation and the compound interest tables. So in this problem, we are converting the uniform gradient series, which is represented with a G, into a present value or P. 
G and P is important to note or know when we go to reference the compound interest tables. The uniform gradient present worth formula written in functional notation for a present worth is P is equal to G times the variable or the factor defined by P over G I N where the term P over G I N can be defined using the given values for interest and the period and the compound interest table starting on page 116 of the NCEES supply reference handbook. So in this problem we are given an interest rate of 10% or 0 0.10, a period of 15 years, so N is equal to 15 years. Now referencing the compound interest table for the interest rate of 10% on page 119 of the NCEES supplied reference handbook we locate N equal 15 which is our period in the far left column and work our way horizontally to the factor P over G which converts a gradient cost into a present cost or a present value and find that P over G I N is equal to 40.1520 so plugging this value into the equation we get P is equal to $250 times 40.1520 which is equal to 10,038 so this company should set aside $10,038 now to ensure they are able to pay the maintenance costs for this machine over its 15 year lifespan. So that's it, but there are some ways that we can mess this problem up. One problem may arise when we treat the maintenance costs as a uniform annual cost over the lifespan of the machine. So that's to say the $215 maintenance cost remains the same through the 15 years. This problem statement specifically defines the transaction as a cost that is incrementally increasing as a uniform gradient and using any other approach would significantly underestimate the amount of money that you would need to set aside. And as in any other problem it is important to make sure that you are referencing the correct term when using the compound interest tables especially as we move into more complex scenarios we will often be referring to multiple terms at once in this problem you may use the correct table and term for n or the period but reference a over p instead of p over a it's a simple mistake so it is also very easy to just outright reference a table for the wrong interest rate just remember that the interest rate is always at the top of the table and this one is specifically references a 10% interest rate. Well that's it for this video. Do you know anybody that would benefit from this lesson? If so, let's try to reach out and help others by sharing this video with them. Also, take a second to like this video and leave a comment and tell me how it will help you move forward in your goal of becoming a professional engineer. And finally, type in engineerintrainingexam.com into your URL bar and visit the site to download for free the transcript to this video along with the example problem and solution we worked. While you are there, you can also sign up for the free EIT Academy Bootcamp, 137 pages and over 50 practice problems and solutions to get you on track to passing this exam.